part of my presence YouTube channel. This is going to be a short discussion. Uh, someone wanted me to give my opinion on the whole Cardi B, Mike Thee Stallion uh, video. Now, I'm not going to review the video per se, but I'm going to talk about a couple of things here, okay? Because a lot of people are outraged by the uh, profanity, they're outraged by the imagery, they're outraged by the content of the video, the whole gimmick and all that stuff. And yeah, I understand and I get that. And what are we trying to promote here? We're trying to promote uh, whores over good women. Are we trying to promote not cooking and cleaning over doing other things to get your ring? Listen. Listen, there is a little bit of a double a double standard here, okay? When you look at when you look at hip hop in general and you look at all of the videos, the raunchy videos that ever occurred, there's a lot of videos done by male rappers that were just as raunchy, just as vulgar, imagery and all. Don't get me started with Tip Trill and Nelly. Don't get me started with Lil John. I like them girls. Don't get me started with Luke. Don't get me started with French Montana and Pop That. There's so many of them, okay? And we all enjoyed it. We all like to, you know, pop bottles in the club and dance to it. Look for the girl to dance with at the clubs. We approved of those music videos. We approved of those lyrics. We approved of the content. We had no problems. Some of y'all might have taken offense to it, or sorry, not took it. I shouldn't say took it, taken offense to it. And yes, I understand all of that. But at the end of the day, this is just a female's turn to do something raunchy, to do something nasty, to do something over the top. And I get it. And I have no problem with that as it is, that part alone. Whatever female rappers want to put out, let them put it out. What they get in return, they're gonna get in return. But here's what I have a problem with, and here's what I find very interesting about this whole thing. When I think about all those videos I've mentioned, or all those songs I mentioned, Nelly, Tip Drill, uh, I Like Them Girls, uh, even we look at Too Short and uh, it's this whole catalog, right? The one thing that you notice is that these songs, these videos, they're regulated to off times that they air. Okay, if you remember, where did we see Tip Drill? It wasn't during Rap City, you know, from the hours of 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. It wasn't during uh, Rachel and the Island Vibes ever show that she had, you know, in the morning. It wasn't during the T-Summit time slot. It was during the BET Uncut time slot. You had to wait until 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning to watch that. Rightfully so. But here is the trickery. Because when did we see this video? Number one, when did it premiere? Right? When did it premiere? It premiered during prime time, daytime hours. Right? It got all this publicity. Not by, you know, offshoot magazines or offshoot, um, you know, hip hop sites that are raunchy. It got reviewed. It got showcased. It was talked about by mainstream media. Entertainment Tonight. Uh, BET, the Huffington Post. I, I'm I'm exaggerating. Maybe maybe Huffington Huffington Post did review it. I don't know. But the point I'm trying to make here is that it became it was legitimized. Put it that way. It was legitimized. It wasn't pushed under the rug. It wasn't something that was you know played when the kids were around. This was something that was exalted for everyone to see. Something for everyone to embrace. Femininity, female power, female empowerment. That was the message with all of this. And this is what was being promoted to everybody. 
Now, the problem I have with this is that this is an adult content. It's very sexual in nature. It's very raunchy, very vulgar. It's almost like they, it was pretty much too short. Say the most outlandish sexual thing that you could think of and make it rhyme, right? It, it could have been called Freaky Tales 2, to be honest, or actually three, Freaky Tales 3, if you want to be honest, right? But you'll never see Too Short on Entertainment Tonight talking about his song, getting this prime time slot for his YouTube video to air. But Meg Thee Stallion and Cardi B, they get that thing. They get that exposure, they get that love, they get that acceptance. And I have a problem with that because you are advertising, you are showcasing this type of content to children because that is who is listening to this stuff. Okay, back in the day, you had people like Adina Howard, Little Kim, Foxy Brown, right? But for the most part, they never got those, those slots. They never got on quote unquote mainstream media to talk about their their you know raunchy video they didn't get that exposure i mean put it this way when was the last time you saw a rapper who who uh, dabbled in a profession that was not legal that pretty much uh, had no issues with their past life showed no remorse for their past life and who promote uh you no know, degenerate behavior and still get to sit down with an elusive politician such as Bernie Sanders, right? Bernie Sanders don't sit with everybody or just anybody, right? He only sat down with who Killer Mike, but Killer Mike had to really go hard for him. And the other person is Cardi B. Now think about this. You have people who are more educated like Ice Cube, right? You have people like Talib Kweli. You have people like Chuck D right who have that tenure who have that that cloth who have that that uh that catalog to say hey i am about politics i'm an activist i'm socially aware i'm socially relevant this is my lane but no politician would sit down with those people right even the canon be prior to all this stuff that he got involved with no one sat down with him but yet you have bernie sanders a man over 70 years old is sitting down with Cardi B? How does Cardi B get that type of leverage? Doesn't that bug anyone? Right? I mean, Snoop Dogg can't even get Obama to come sit with him. He can't get any politician to sit down with him. But Cardi B gets that. Right? Cardi B gets to represent the Latino community. And also the black community when it comes to the music and the, the rap and the raunchy lyrics and the videos and all that stuff. And she could get all of that. She could play both sides, right? She could drug men and have people rob them, right? In the hotels. She could exalt her past life as a stripper. And all the things that she did for money. She could talk about how good her uh, oral skills are. She could talk about her sex game she could dance nude and twerk in videos talk about how ratchet she is promote gang life claim on twitter that she's part of a particular blood affiliated gang and the next day she's promoting corporate america sitting down with bernie sanders Explain that to me. You tell me when Two Shorts ever sat down with a politician to discuss politics. And he has more culturally relevant music and social wear uh, music in his catalog than Cardi B ever had. So what's going on? Why is it that they've given Cardi B this platform to play both sides? That's the only problem I have with this. Pretty much from what I see, she's playing both sides of it. And at the end of the day, you have a lot of people who look to Cardi B, not necessarily as a role model, but I guess you could say a role model because she's really an example of how women could embrace their sexuality and make money from it, sell their body, sell the imagery of sex, and still be, con be considered as legitimate. 
people to be taken seriously in politics. There's no way that could happen in real life. Right? The only reason why Bernie Sanders sat down with her is because of her following. And she put herself up there to the highest bidder. Right? She made that known. She even made a, a, a video about wanting to be the COVID-19 spokesperson. Right? Since everyone else was coming out saying they have COVID. She's like, yo, how much money do you want to pay me to say I have COVID? I'll come out and do that too. She said that. So we all know she's up for the price. She's for sale. But you have to wonder, how is it that she was able to leverage that lane or those multiple lanes? Because I don't think any other rapper has done that, right? Even Jay-Z had to clean up his image before he could sit down with Oprah to discuss his life, right? Ludacris can't even sit down with Oprah. 50 Cent and Oprah had issues. But guess who Oprah's favorite rapper is? Cardi B. Please make that make sense. Anyway, so that's my take on it. I don't really care about the imagery of the video. I don't care about the lyrics because again, there's been many songs before this that has been just as raunchy, just as over the top. But my issue is that why is this considered mainstream? Why is this being accepted uh, at, at such a high level? And why is Cardi B still able to leverage this other side, this other lane where she could be in politics and taken seriously, even though she has no education, she's not the greatest of speakers, uh, she's not really intelligent, but the only thing that she does have is a large following and a platform for the Latin community, which of course politicians are trying to reach because of their demographics, and also which represents quote unquote the black community, I guess, based on you know, having a, a large hip hop following. So she's like a, a, a double, you know, uh, uh, she, she, she hits two, uh, two for the price of one. So they're going to look to her to kind of tap into that market. I don't know, but I could think of so many more credible people in hip hop who've done more socially, who have done more as far as activism where that would be the right platform to go and spread your message and to speak to people who actually are culturally aware, who are aware uh, as far as politically aware, who would actually go to these polls and wait a couple of hours to vote. Isn't that who you want? Because I don't see people who listen to Cardi B being the ones that A, are old enough to vote and B, willing to stay in line for that long to pull a lever or to write on a piece of paper saying yes or no or check mark. You tell me that's my opinion of it. I don't care about the lyrics. I'm not offended. Do your thing. But that song, those artists, there's a time and place for it. And that should be around one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, BET on cut hours. You know what I'm talking about if you're around back then, if you knew about that game and that vibe. Anyways, part of my presence YouTube channel, like, comment, subscribe. Peace.